Hello and welcome to a Python 3 Basics tutorial series. In this series you will learn the building blocks to the Python programming language. A bit about the language, Python was created by Guido Van Rossum in the late 80s and then from there Python slowly began to gain recognition and popularity. Python 2.0, which is really where Python gained a lot of traction, came about in 2000 and then finally Python 3.0, which is the version of Python we're covering here, came out in late 2008. Python is what is known as a high-level programming language, which means it has a decent distance away from raw kind of machine code. This high-level nature makes Python a fantastic choice as a first programming language because the syntax is very simple just to understand compared to many other languages and the wide range of tasks that Python can cover is staggering. So that's kind of why it makes such a good a good language. For the most part, you should be able to look at some Python code and understand what is happening, even if possibly you're not a programmer. There might be some confusing things there, but for the most part, it should kind of make sense even visually to the non-programmer. So with Python, you can do all sorts of things, you know, data analysis, visualization, to robotics, to web design, and a whole lot more. So Python is a scripting language and it's interpreted at runtime. So a scripting language just means that the program is read line by line. This means that any errors besides any syntax errors, these errors are going to not be discovered until the program goes line by line through the program and will basically run all the lines until the error and then it will finally arrive to the error and throw the error as opposed to compiled languages where they're compiled at run and if there's an error somewhere in the program, it's going to show right at the, com the compiling of it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, how do we actually get Python? So first we're going to need to head over to python.org, which is what we're staring at right now. And if you come here, it may look a little different depending on when you actually show up to the series. If you're watching the series right now, the current version for me is Python 3.4, but you might be watching this and maybe 3.0. 8 is out, for example. As long as it's Python 3 something, everything should be similar. And the creator of Python and the developers of Python at the moment are, you know, are saying that even later versions should be completely workable between the versions, as opposed to there's a lot of major differences between Python, say, 2.7 and Python 3.4. So once you're on python.org, let's click on downloads. You could just go straight to one of these downloads. It's obviously sensing that I'm on a Windows machine. And if you want to download a 32-bit Python, then feel free. But if you happen to have a 64-bit operating system, I would kind of suggest that you not download this one. You should go with the 64-bit version of Python. And the reason for this is 32-bit operating systems and then any 32-bit programs are going to be limited to 2 gigabytes of RAM per instance. So anytime you're trying to do something that's going to require more than 2 gigs of RAM, you're going, your program is going to just stop, come to a grinding halt. And so that's no good. So if you have a 64-bit operating system, you should definitely have 64-bit Python. So for me, I'm Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Windows. And we can see all of these releases. We're actually interested in the most recent 3.4.1 here. They're also still releasing new versions of Python 2.7 as well, just simply because there are still people that program in Python 2 because there is a pretty staggering difference between the two of them. So a lot of Python 2 code is not compatible with Python 3 code or a Python 3 interpreter. So for this reason, you know, a lot of businesses are being run off of Python 2.7. They simply can't make the switch to 3.4 without a lot of work. So that's why we have that happening. So anyways, let's click on 3.4.1 or whatever the latest one is for you. And you can come down here and we'll go to download. Please proceed to the download page. We'll click on that. And for me, again, I'm on a Windows 64-bit machine. Now you can download whichever version you want. You can also download the source. If you're on Mac OS, you can download here. Although if you are on Mac or any Apple computer, for the most part, you should have no problem you actually should have Python already installed. It would behoove you to check if you're on a Mac. Anyway, coming down here, I want the 60 MS, Windows X686-64 MSI installer for the 64-bit Python. So we'll go ahead and install that. And whenever that's installed, go ahead and run. And next, next, 
I already have it because I use Python 3. Nice, 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 nice. This should pop up here. We get some like pip and all that setup tool that looks like it installed. Finish. And now you're all done. So now what you should be able to do is, for example, we can go to computer and you can come over into your C drive and you should have a Python 34 directory. And within there is basically everything. Now, to program in Python, you're going to do the following things. So if it really depends on preference. Now, some people prefer to type in a interactive or live IDE. And IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Uh, Python's IDE is actually called IDLE, like I-D-L-E. And the L is literally just the devel uh, mint, so nothing special about it. It's still an IDE. And so there are other IDEs as well. Eclipse is a popular IDE that people use, especially for like Java. Um, and there's a Python extension for it. Also, Wing IDE is a paid IDE that is very popular among Python programmers. You're also going to see people using IPython Notebook, which is a live interpreter. I prefer to just use the basic IDE, so that's what we're going to be showing in this series. And uh, I'm going to show you now how to get to that. So if you've installed Python 3, what you're going to want to do is go to your start bar, and then you click on all programs, um, and then you should have Python 34, and if you come down, you should see idle, and then in parentheses, Python GUI. Click on that, and up should pop something that looks like this. Now this is basically a, well it is, a Python shell, and it's a live interpreter, so you can type stuff into here, and it's going to basically input this into the Python and be interpreted as Python code. So if we just enter this, this isn't very valid code. So if we hit enter, we actually get an error. And it says that's not defined because it was expecting it to be a variable. But now we can actually, let's type our very first program just to kind of show off uh, this interpreter here. And for now, we're just going to have it output something to console. So we're going to use this print statement. And we'll cover that a little bit more in the next uh, chapter here. But for now, print and then put two uh, round brackets here and then two quotes. And let's just do a simple hello world. Now when you've done that, we can hit enter and we see that the output is hello world. So this is just a simple print statement, but it basically is showing the live nature here. So after we finish this line, it basically threw out this was your input line, this is your output line. Now I don't really like programming it in this sort of fashion where everything is live and each line that you write has you know is input and then you get the output. I don't really like that. I like to just program more of a notepad type fashion. So to do that we're gonna go file, new file, and now you have this blank sort of document, right? So we can also type the same thing that we just typed here, right? So we can go print and hello world again. And this time, to run it, first we're going to have to save this file somewhere. So let's go File, Save As. And we could put it there in Python 3 4. It really doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it wherever you'd like. For me, I'm just going to put it there for now. And let's just say example pi. And this is going to be example pi, and we're saving it as a dot pi. So let's just go ahead and hit Save. And we're all done. And now when we want to run this program, finally, Every time you maybe you add new new bits of code to this program, you'll have to save it before you run it. And but you can either go run run module, or you can just use the F5 key, and that will also run it. So if I hit F5 right now, it's currently unsaved, so it's going to come up with this little box here. And it's going to say source must be saved. Okay to save. I'm going to hit OK, and then we see that there the program has run again. And that's really it. So that's going to conclude this chapter of the introduction to what Python is. Just a brief intro introduction to this print function, but we're going to cover that more in the next chapter. How to open up the IDE, what's the interactive IDE, and what's just this kind of notepad IDE here, and all of that. So anyways, stay tuned to the next chapter.